All right, algebra, let's continue on with our lessons in multiplying and factoring polynomial expressions. Um, we did this last lesson um, using a table as an aid where if I am multiplying two binomials, I would um, write a binomial along the top of the table, along the side, and then multiply column and row. Column and row, column and row, column and row. And then, go ahead and collect all the like terms. Most often the middle is going to collect. I get x squared plus seven plus three is 10, x plus 21, and I have an answer. So let's go ahead and try another one. Use a table to aid in finding the product. Write one across the top and one across the side. Multiply column and row, so I get 2x squared plus x, 8x, and 4. Collect like terms, I get 2x squared, 8 plus 1 is 9 plus 4. All right, let's review a little bit. So we have a polynomial expression. It is either a numerical expression or a variable symbol, or what we're gonna be dealing with is more like number two, the result of placing two previously generated polynomial expressions into the blanks of the addition operator or the multiplication operator. For instance, um, the last equation we just did, we got 2x squared, well, no, let's do this. Um, let's talk about what the constant is when we have the term x minus seven. The constant is the number. And in this case, it is negative seven because I would change this into x plus negative seven. So that's why we're always gonna have x, well, a blank plus a blank even if this blank is a negative number, right? So um, that's what I just want to call out here. So um, the constant term of a binomial like this is actually negative seven. The constant term of something like this, the constant is a two. But if we make something negative, x minus 3, it's really x plus negative 3, and the constant is negative 3. All right, so let's multiply the following binomials. Note that every binomial um, given in the problems below is a polynomial in one variable, x with a degree of 1. Um, what we just talked about in the previous slides is this example, x plus a negative 7. Now, every time I look at problems like this, I almost instantly just remember that. But since you guys are still practicing, we just need to remember that um, this binomial actually is x plus negative seven. So when we FOIL, which is going to be first outer, x times negative seven is negative seven x, inner, and last. Now we collect those middle terms we get negative 6x minus 7 as our answer. And this is our form that we're looking in. Okay, here it's a little bit easier. First, outer, inner, and last. Okay, go ahead and collect those middle terms. 9 plus 2 is 11. And we have our answer. Okay, here... If you've got those negatives, you're good, but if you need to rewrite them, please do. I have first, which is x squared, outer, negative 3x, inner, negative 3x, and last, positive 9. Collect your like, sorry, collect your middle terms, and you get x squared minus 6x plus 9. I did that wrong. I apologize. I hope you caught it. That should be a 5. 
which means inner first outer inner um, negative 5x and that would be plus 15 so this middle would be negative 3 negative 5 is 8 and that would be 15 sorry about that all right let's try this last one um, rewrite it if you need to you have x plus a negative 1 first outer would be minus x minus 1x if you need to write that inner plus 15 halves x and last minus 15 halves uh, collect the middle let's see 2 15 over 2 is the same as 7 and 1 half if I have a negative 1 plus 7 and a half that gives me 6 and a half and there we go alrighty alright last one I'm not going to make those negatives into plus and minus this time Let's go ahead and do x squared. First, outer is negative 3 fourths x. Inner, negative 5 fourths x. And last, positive, multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom, and there we go. Collect your middle terms. I have x squared minus 8 fourths x plus 15 sixteenths simplifies to 2 and there we go great did you guys notice any patterns now look at them what do you see let's see all the coefficients let's see if we have ax squared plus bx plus c all the a's or ones. Crazy. Um, the constant, the C's, were all the product of the constant in the binomial. Um, what else? Looking at all my answers. What else do I see? Hmm. The B's are always combined um, outer and inner of the foil. That's really it. That's all I see. All right. Now we factor. Here's where the work starts. Um, I'm going to show you what I do every time because I really love patterns. Um, what we're looking for is this last term, the factors of it, which 7 only factors into 1 times 7. And if we add those together, let's see if I take that multiplication out and I make it a plus, I get 8. Look. There's an 8. So now I, can, I know I can break that into x plus 1, x plus 7 from those numbers right there. And you know, I'm always going to double check it. So first, outer, inner, last gives me x squared plus um, 8x plus 7. I got my original equation back. And it always works that way. Even these big numbers. I'm going to take that 90 and break it into two numbers. I'm actually going to take the negative 90. Two numbers that give me a 1. I'm going to do 9 times 10. Looks like I need a positive 1, but I have a negative 90. So one of these has to be negative. If I multiply negative 9 times positive 10, I get negative 90. And if I add negative 9 plus 10, I get 1. 
and 1 is what I want. So these are the numbers I'm going to use. x minus 9, x plus 10. Let's check it. First, outer, inner, and last. Collect those middle terms and I get the original problem. It's sort of magical, isn't it? Okay, keep working with me. I need to find factors of 40 that add to 13. Now it's a positive 40. So find factors of 40. Um, 2 times 23, 4 times 10, um, 5 times 8. Right there I have a negative 13. Negative time, 5 times negative 8 gives me a positive 40. And if I add those, I get negative 13. So that's what I need to use, these numbers right here x minus 5, x minus 8. Let's check it. First, outer, inner, last. Collect your middle terms, and I get my original equation. Crazy, huh? Okay, how about negative 100? And I'm trying to get to positive 99. Um, I would do 1 times 100, and if we make that a negative and add them, we get positive 99. x minus 1, x plus 100. Check it. x squared minus 100x. No, plus 100x. Minus 1x minus 100. Collect your middle terms. Uh, plus 99. Oh, I did all X's, didn't I? These are V's. It's okay. You guys can do it. I did the same thing up here. Um, they're K's. I used X's. Sorry about that. Awesome. All right. So quadratic expressions. If the leading coefficient for a quadratic, quadratic expression is not 1, the first step in factoring should be to see if all the terms in the expanded form have a common factor. What this says is ax squared plus bx plus c, where a is not equal to 1. Um, so then after factoring out the GCF, it may be possible to factor again. So if you will look at this one, um, first we're going to factor out the GCF, which in this case is a 2x. And then we're going to look at what's left over and try to factor it again, right? Another example, follow the steps to factor negative 16t squared plus 32t plus 48. Um, always factor out a negative. If you have a negative leading number, you want to get rid of that thing and factor it out. So I'm going to factor out negative 16 and see what's left. That leaves me with t squared um, minus, nope, minus 2. T minus 3. Now you can distribute and double check. That's going to be negative 16 t squared plus 32 t plus 48. And that's what we have up here. Cool. So first factor out the GCF. Now, look ways to factor further. We're going to look at this right here and see if we can factor it further. I have a negative 3 that breaks into 1 times 3. I have a negative 2 in the middle, so if I add those, I need a negative 2. That means I want a negative there. So that gives me negative 16 times t plus 1, t minus 3. Let's check it. First outer, inner, last. Collect those middle terms. I get minus 2t minus 3, which is my original equation. 
So that right there is my answer. Cool. Oh, lesson summary. So that last example, you're going to have one like that in your problem set. Um, it's a big one, but you can do it. Okay? Good job.